If you've been enjoying our free The Reason for Everything podcast, please be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all platforms or wherever you get your podcasts. Your fellow podcast host, I know you're very, very deep, deeply rooted in the fitness community, but I'd love to give you a chance to just introduce yourself to my audience and uh, we can go from there. Yeah, no, that sounds great. I love, I think the coolest thing about the fitness industry is it's small, right? Like, you know, one person, you know, the world. Uh, so I love that we connected on Instagram and hopefully we'll meet in person soon. Um, but yeah, a little, little kind of backstory, um, pitch about me is I'm from LA. I live in Austin, Texas now. Um, super involved with the fitness community here. I think the community in Austin is absolutely incredible. Uh, I've been teaching group fitness classes now for about nine years, I would say. Um, it's one of my deepest passions. It's so cool that I'm able to find this passion of mine and have it on the side. Uh, full time, I lead partnerships for a company called True Coach. It's a fitness tech company. Uh, it's one of the leading fitness platforms for personal trainers to use as an app. Um, and then I also have my podcast called Fit Food Junkies, uh, which has been super fun. And um, I also lead the Nike Well Collective Run Club here in Austin. So that's been another really cool opportunity lately to just be involved in the community. And um, it's it's been awesome. I love it. I love it. There's so much I want to to jump into. Have to first make a plug for my sister. She's been teaching cycle for many years now, and those group fitness classes oh, yeah. are, are, are no joke. And uh, I know I know the preparation that goes into them. So um, hats off to you for for diving into that. Yeah. No thanks. I actually just um, I just finished teaching cycling like right before this. Um, so I was like, well, got the sweaty hair going on, the whole thing, but. We're here, so <laughs> we're doing um, it, and uh, you, yeah. got the, you got the endorphins pumping. It's all it's all part of the fun. Exactly, exactly. It was a good little like pre workout for uh, for this. <laughs> there you go. So, what brought you from LA to Austin? Give me a little bit more context on your backstory. That I guess maybe how you got into and when you got into the fitness world in the first place. And obviously, you know, there's all the cliches about the LA stereotypes of fitness and health and wellness. But was that parallel to your journey growing up there, or what was that experience like for you? Of the stereotypes in LA? Yeah, like, you know, I mean, not now with like the $50 Erewhon smoothies, I feel like everyone's more familiar with that. But, you know, LA is just a hub for health and wellness for better and for worse. And, and a lot of that's aesthetics. But I'd be curious, like, what was your relationship like with health and wellness as a kid growing up in LA? Was that any sort of uh, overlap in your journey that got you to where you are today? Or is that more of a coincidence? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, just just growing up in LA, I think it's easy to be around like the whole influencer world and, um, you know, like the stereotypes you think of it in LA. Right. For me though, I didn't grow up with influencers around me. Like that didn't exist. Right. So it was a little bit different. Um, now of course, when I go back, it's, it's that. Um, but I mean, I would say like my upbringing in fitness, <coughs> excuse me, was super, um, I mean, super, <laughs> excuse me, I some water. I don't know what, no no, I was I tripping on. <laughs> we'll edit that out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think I grew up um, and I had scoliosis at a really young age, which is a curvature of your spine. And this kind of goes away from your question for a second. But um, it really taught me that I had to wear a back brace for a good amount of time. And when I was able to get that back brace off and God will, I was super grateful. I didn't have to get surgery. It really allowed me to discover my passion for fitness and moving my body at such a young age because I felt what it felt like to be so restricted. Um, mm. So I was just obsessed with moving my body. And that would, that's what it really allowed me to get so into the fitness community and teaching classes. And, um, and growing up in LA, I think that I grew up with that pa that strong passion and teaching fitness classes that I was able to kind of gear away from that kind of toxicity in LA of, you know, of like seeing what you look like all the time and focusing on physical appearances. And I think probably around, probably when I was a freshman in college is when it definitely got toxic because I was at an age where you start to use social media more, you starting to surround yourself more with now like creators or fitness creators are starting to exist. Right. So it becomes toxic. And I grew up in, you know, like a really healthy environment. So I think 
I'm not saying I didn't go through a lot of toxicity with myself and my mind and my body, but then it really, you have to be strong enough to not let that affect you. Yeah. And it makes a ton of sense. And I guess in, in your journey, and one thing I, I loved and part of the outreach in the first place is, is your motto or, or slogan of addicted to health. Yeah. At what point, at what point did you get that bug? I feel like everyone I've spoken with in this ecosystem has, you know, a moment or a, I guess, a time frame they really got the bug from for health and wellness and you know a modern health uh, non-toxic way what was that timeline like for you when did that kind of overlap in your journey yeah that's a really good question the i came up with the slogan addicted to health is because my brand is called fit food junkies and when you're a junkie you're addicted to something and it normally has a negative connotation but I kind of put a little a little pun on it, uh, a little swing on it, because um, addicted to health, I used to be addicted to health in a really negative way. So in college, I got overly obsessed. Going back to your question of LA, right? There was a time in my life where I was, I was, I was obsessed with fitness in a really unhealthy way. Unhealthy way. I was at the gym for hours. I was tracking my food so stringently. It was excessive and unhealthy. But I didn't even realize that at the time until later. I was like, whoa, like this is not okay. But I think it took me time to actually realize and snap out of that. So when I came up with my slogan, addicted to health, it's like, well, I used to be addicted to health in a really negative way. And I've been able to kind of negate that and, and be able to come out of it in a really healthy way now. Yeah, I love that. That's, uh, it's nice to switch the paradigm for the idea of junkie and, and, and especially in this, in this landscape of, of health and wellness and in your journey, what was, was there a particular person in your life or a, or a, another influencer or someone that helped to, you know, be a guiding light in, in that journey for you? Um, you know, I'm trying to think if there was like one specific, um, scenario that was kind of a guiding light, but I think like your mind is so powerful and I, I think I can name so many mentors, um, but I think it really came down to like realizing and self-reflection on myself of like, whoa, like this is not the kind of life I want to live. This is not who I want to be um, and kind of take yourself outside of it for a moment, like almost like taking yourself out of reality and looking at yourself inward. Like, is this the person I want to be? So I actually think there were a lot of people that influenced me in a really negative way that I can mm. definitely go into. But um, I don't know if I have one specific mentor, but I think it was really up to me to become like the bigger mentor within myself to be bigger than this and be like, whoa, it's time to like get out of this and not be addicted in such an unhealthy way. Um, I'll get back to you on that because, you know, I think it's also like you have to do the work, right? There's so much work that went into for me to go up to me to be able to become addicted in a really healthy way. Um, and there's so many things that I can go into, but also doing like that self-help work to become, to find maybe mentors in podcasts, for example, or books or walks and being with my own thoughts, you know? So finding mentors in those other aspects as well. Do you feel like, I think about this a lot with some stuff in business and some, some stuff with the podcast and even in my own health and wellness journey. Do you think you had to see the extreme to be grateful for where you are now. I feel like that that's the, that was the case for me. I think about that all the time. Yeah, it's actually so funny because I have been in so many scenarios in the fitness world where, I mean, I can't even count the amount of times where I feel like so many people have reached that extreme to actually be where they are now. Um, do I think it's necessary? I mean, no, I don't want people to go through that extreme, but I do think that it has, I'm grateful that I have gone through that because now I'm even more passionate. I also coach people on the side and I think it's even more passionate now about helping women, especially to have healthy relationships with food, with their bodies, with their minds and with exercise. So personally, I'm so happy I went through it because I'm able to relate to a lot of these women that have gone through similar issues and it's made me stronger in the mind, the body, and just overall, um, in my own, own well being. I don't want people to reach those extremes, but I think if you do, you have to have a strong enough mindset to be able to get out of it and then let it serve you for the bet for the better. 
I want to learn more about your, you know, mindset motivation journey here in a moment, but putting that to the side, you know, you mentioned you went to school, you went to USC if I did my homework correctly. Is that right? Yeah, you, you did it right. <laughs> and then, and then what brought you from Southern California to Austin? What was the, you know, genesis for that move? Yeah. So I, um, I went to USC fight on, uh, I majored in health promotion and disease prevention. I minored in business and Spanish and, I just like many other college students, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and I thought I was going to go into healthcare. Uh, I started off working in corporate wellness and fitness for a really long time. And I've always been teaching group fitness classes on the side. I teach at Equinox now. Um, and I just, I love doing that. But in terms of like full time, I've always worked corporate wellness full time. And then I actually thought I wanted to get into healthcare, which led me to Austin. I loved Austin and I've been in LA my whole life. I just wanted to get out for a little bit. So I, um, I applied for jobs here and it was, um, I definitely kind of like manifested it. I was like, I'm going to work here. This is going to happen. Um, and then I got a job here in the healthcare industry, but I realized that it just wasn't for me and fitness was where my passion was. Um, so I now work back in the corporate uh, wellness world, but that's what brought me to Austin. Super cool. And I feel like the timing of that probably worked out well with, you know, all of the health and wellness creators flooding to, to oh Austin during yeah. the last few years, you know? Oh yeah. It's insane how, I mean, it's such a fitness hub. It's crazy. It's like one of the top fitness hubs. It's, it's wild. Like you would have never thought, but come to Austin. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It really is. I, uh, back to Equinox, my cousin, Sam, he, uh, he mm -hmm. said that he manifested the life that I'm living now for me because he joined Equinox right out of school. He was, you know, dedicated and diligent in his budgeting. He said he wants to go. There's one in DC here that has a basketball court. And he said, I want to be able to go play basketball, get my lift in. They have a swimming pool, everything this is my, they, my Equinox plug. But he, uh, he had been going there for a few months and like almost every day he would call me and say, Hey, you got to join. You got to join. You got to join. So finally, I he, love he, it. He, he got to me. I did it, and and we were there. He he's more still more diligent than I am, and getting there very early in the morning. But uh, but that gym has been a, a huge unlock for me in my fitness and wellness journey, and um, and part of it's just the community that's part of that that you get from that. And I imagine it's the same thing for you and uh, and, and all of Austin being that way in a lot of ways. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I I love it. It's been yeah. such a great community, and it's it's also crazy because. I, I don't know. I feel like a lot is just, it just takes time. Like I, when I was 18, I was like, I want to teach at Equinox. This is where I want to be. And I auditioned when I was 18 and I didn't make it. I also didn't have that much experience at the time. And I just kept on saying like, I, it wasn't like an, if it was just a, when I was like, I know mm -hmm. I'm gonna eventually teach there. And I just worked really hard and got the experience I needed to eventually get there. But yeah, definitely big love fan. <laughs> love it, love it. Now you mentioned you manifested your journey down to Austin. Are you, yeah. you subscribe to the idea of manifestation or is that more, you know, the colloquial <laughs> phrasing there? What do you, what, what's your head space like around that? Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm like a huge woo woo kind of person. Um, but I am in a way spiritually where I'm such a big person on mindset. I coach people through mental fitness and that's what I'm super passionate about because my mind has gotten me out through really hard situations and it's me gotten in, in to amazing situations and allowed me to control my mindset in the most incredible ways. And I just think the mind is so powerful. Um, and you can create it. You can recreate your mind. I was, um, I was listening the other day to, um, this podcast with David Goggins and it was so cool that someone said, you know, it's so cool that you were born with this mindset. Like that's insane. He goes, I was not born with this mindset. I created this mindset. So I think just, um, you know, I think it's an aspect of like going back to manifestation. It, it's, I think it's a lot of what you tell your mind. So telling your mind, like, this is going to happen to me, just like the Equinox example or going to Austin. I, it's almost like you say, I'm, I'm there, I'm going to be there and you make it sound so real. It's not, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get the job. I don't know if I'm going to get there. No, I'm going to get there. I am there. And I just think people need to start changing the words that they tell their mind because they're so powerful. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. And, and I definitely subscribe both on the woo side of manifestation, but also the actual, uh, you know, action that goes yeah. into Yeah, I mean, it. I could get into both for sure. A hundred percent. And I think I had a, a guest on a couple of days ago, Michael Chernow, big in the health and wellness world. And he was talking about his and how his creative process works. And 
the way he's able, mm-hmm. he's able to go from idea to vision board to actually creating what he wants. And he said he fully subscribes to the idea of it. And I think that, you know, if you look at manifestation on the face at face value and think, oh, hey, you're just saying, hey, I'm going to, you know, own this house. Or I'm going to go and, right. you know, do live in Austin. And everyone always says, oh, you actually have to go and do the thing in order to make it happen. But yeah, it's, that's it's, true. To, your point, it's, to your point about, you know, creating your, your mind or recreating your mind, it's you're almost rewiring your thinking by saying, hey, I'm mm-hmm, going to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this. I'm already, I've already done this. And if you, yeah. you know, it's, you're just tricking yourself. That's all it is. If you kind of put the reps in the same way you do in the gym, if you put the reps in your mind and you're convincing yourself, you already have this thing, you've already done this thing, you've already been to this place. Eventually you start saying it enough that it becomes, you know, blends your conscious and subconscious yeah. to then actually go out and, and create it. And it's, I feel like it's only a matter of time if you continue to do that. And th- that, that's a long winded soapbox way of saying, I think that people constantly confuse, oh, like, you know, if you just sit, sit on your couch and vision board all day, it's never going to happen. Yes. Mm-hmm. But if you vision board and then are intentional about thinking about what you put onto that mm-hmm. vision board, you're going to naturally put yourself in position to accomplish what you want to accomplish. That's my two cents on it. I couldn't agree more. And you, you also touched upon action. I think, um, my brother actually said this to me the other day. He's like, yeah, you can say the things that's going to happen and and think about it, but you also have to put the action into it. So you can't just say like, oh, we'll we'll wait for it to happen. Like, let's see what happens. Like, no, put the action to get there and then put the thoughts with that, with them as well. They're, they go, they're go hand in hand. Yeah. That ties into an idea that I like to talk about around attracting and not chasing what you want. Mm. And I love having this conversation in the context of fitness because Mm -hmm. if you're going, and that goes back to like, you know, what fit people's fitness goals are. If you're just going after aesthetics, you're just going after, you know, a a shortcut ahead of, you know, summertime, it's going to, you're going to be back in the same position in a few months time. But if you're thinking Mm -hmm. about it, attracting the, the, you know, physique, the body, the mind that you want by the time you're, you know, 70, 80, 90 years old, if more people, I think, thought with that mindset going into the gym or, you know, going on their wellness journey, I feel like there's a, a totally different side of that for people's journeys that could be unlocked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I could not agree more. I think one of my favorite books is called Ask and It Is Given. It's by Esker. Oh, yeah. es- uh, you, you read it, Higgs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You you read it. Okay. It's one of my favorite books, like the ones you kind of you highlight and you're like, oh my God. Um, but the idea of the manifestation part and um my this dog wants to come on the podcast. Um, what's the uh, what's the pup's name? His name is Goose. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think the idea of manifestation is so strong and it, for it to align, right? Like there's so many people that are like, oh. like people feel sorry for themselves and wonder why things aren't aligning for them instead of you just have to control your mind and you have to be more powerful than your thoughts and then reality with your thoughts and things will start to align the second you start to believe that reality. And, and same thing, like what you said, when you're older and people are focusing so much on physical appearances, it's like. I don't know. I just, life is too short. And I think that there are so many people that focus so much on the physical appearances and don't get me wrong. We all want to look good, but, uh, the mind body connection goes hand in hand. And that's something that I'm, I, I really preach as a coach. You'll, you'll never hear me talking about, um, you know, like learning to, you'll never hear me talking about earning dessert or like getting a six pack really, you know, I focus on what can we shed mentally that's going to translate physically. And Mm. that's what I think should be at the foundation of fitness. Like, what are you trying to shed mentally? I I think ask any personal trainer. They're also a therapist because the whole time you're moving your body and you're also exercising your mind. And I think if more people learned that exercise is a form of therapy, I think more people would be able to shed the weight that they've been holding on to for so long. And they also wouldn't go into so many healthy habits that they go into. Unhealthy habits, excuse me. I, no, <laughs> I know it's meant to post cycle class. I get it. Um, yeah, it's how yeah, did, the how endorphins you, are flowing. <laughs> I get it. How did you, you know, drill down to this niche of, you know, mind, body, spirit connection, or even really for you, obviously, you know, in the addiction to health, the connection between mind and body? What was that unlock for you? Because you don't learn that in class, for, yeah. for what I've heard from most of those classes. That's not something you learn. Obviously, you're tapped in, you read, asking it yeah. is given, but how did you start to craft this idea of what you saw health and wellness looking like to then translate mm-hmm. that to be a coach? Because 
I'm sure there's other fitness gurus that are out there that are, you know, 20 years your senior that say, Hey, you need to go to the gym every day. You need to eat oatmeal for breakfast. You need to do X, Y, and Z. Right. How did you come up with your kind of unique Emily fit yeah. food junkie prop? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, a great question. I, I'd say like going back to when I had scoliosis as a kid, I had to wear a back brace and being so grateful for my movement. Right. So I think that was one piece of it, of just learning about the gratitude I have for moving my body at such a young age and going through that. Like I had to wear the back brace, like it's this tight, restrictive piece of plastic that I had to wear for five years of my life as a little kid. Like I felt what it felt like to have this restriction of movement. I grew up dancing and running and I was like, whoa, my whole life is changing. So I think gratitude, I started at a really young age for movement. I'm also really blessed that my family is super active and healthy. And at such a young age, um, it was funny. My, my dad, he would always, if I was stressed, he'd be like, go for a run. Like you've been studying, you said you can't focus, like go for a run or, um, my, my dad would always say one of his lines growing up that I'll, I'll never forget. And also always tell even people that I coach is you make time for what you want to make time for. And something I always make time for is moving my body, whether it's a walk or just getting outdoors or a run and running became something that was so therapeutic to me because I started to use it as an outlet, whether I was super stressed at school or had anxiety or had a stressful day, whatever it was, or a bad day running and sprinting and the feeling from it. And also the, um, also kind of like the inspiration from my family too, of moving your body as a form of letting something go mentally starting at a young age, I was like, Whoa, this is cool. Like I feel so much better now I can get back to my homework now, or I feel like I'm not sad anymore, whatever it is. Right. So I think I just became so obsessed with uh, like actually digging into, I feel so good after doing this and not saying like, oh my God, I'm going to burn 100, 200 calories um, and focusing on that feeling. So I think I was really great. Like, I'm just grateful I had that upbringing. Um, and then I think as I grew up and got into that unhealthy relationship with food and with exercise and now getting over that, I think even more so, I think what got me out of that is starting to focus on the mental transformation that got me through that um, and now being able to share it with people that I coach and train. In that mental transformation, what was, was there a, I mean, you talked about, again, asking and just given, was there a book you read or a piece of content that you consumed that opened up your mindset to the attitude for gratitude and everything there? Or what was that like? For you? Um, I, I love Tom Billy, uh, Tom Billy, he's the founder of Quest Nutrition. Um, he actually had him for a snippet of my podcast. He's amazing. Um, he talks so much about the mindset. Like I just, I just became so obsessed with people like him or the Jay Shetties of the world. Right. Um, but just the idea of like sweating and sprinting and pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone that literally revives every single cell inside of you and allows you to grow and become so much stronger in the mind and body. So I think that like, I think whether it's podcast, David Goggins, right. People like that. I just read, um, can't hurt me by David Goggins. Um, and I think also like even, um, I mean, I ran track, I danced and I think just also growing up as an athlete, it's cool to push yourself. Like I remember one time I was training for something in track and, um, I remember at the end, like I, bur I was like, I don't know, it was probably like 15 or something. And I was like, I burst out crying at the end because like my coach pushed me so hard that like it, like, I don't even know evoked a different emotion. I'll never forget that. Cause I just pushed so far out of my limit that I was like, whoa, it's like an out of body experience. But I've gone through so many situations like that, where I start to run and push myself harder than normal. And what is it that's making me push harder? It's a lot of the, those things I surround myself like the podcast and all that, but it's a lot of like personal things that I've gone through, like the unhealthy relationship I had with food, or if I, or maybe something mentally that I've gone through, that's been really challenging. Like I think about that as I push myself and that's what allows me to escape that comfort zone and then heal myself with whatever I'm going through afterwards. Mm. So good. And 
back to the idea of attract and not chasing. And I think it's the same thing. And mm-hmm. they talk about in all of Esther and is it Jeremy Hicks, her husband's name, whatever, whatever it is, all those books, it's the idea of, you know, attracting what you want in this, in this life. And I feel like in our yeah. ecosystems, the best thing about, in my eyes, one of the best things about podcasting is building a, a network of like-minded people. And it's yeah. just, it just becomes an echo chamber. And yeah. I hear a lot and I, th- I think a lot about, you know, the people that don't have the attitude for gratitude that so many of my guests have and so many people that uh, that I love consuming their content, like you mentioned Goggins or, or whoever else mm-hmm, in, mm-hmm. in the, the universe do. And it's it's it becomes a total echo chamber for better and for worse. And then when I talk to somebody kind of outside of the bubble who doesn't necessarily get it or who doesn't necessarily subscribe to all of this, it's like a totally different they're they're seeing the seeing the world with a totally different set of glasses on it's unbelievable oh, i don't know if, yeah. i'm sure you see it between like your run club and group fitness lessons and coaching it's probably like very different hats that you have to wear and oh, very yeah. different <laughs> yeah oh yeah also my mom is a life coach um and she is just incredible in terms of how her upbringing with me too is like anytime i would say something negative about myself or um whatever like whatever it may be or even like I I think she, what she really helped me a lot on is like, I have this, I went through this and it was almost like connecting something negative with me versus like changing the words that you say to yourself. So I think I also really learned that, um, from her with like kind of the words that you tell yourself and like alignments and all that kind of stuff. You're preaching to the choir. Um, (laughs) we, we got deep down the, the, Woo woo rabbit hole for a minute there. So maybe maybe pulling it back up because if there's anyone still listening at this point. Um back to your journey. So you yeah. went to, you moved to Austin, you were in the healthcare space. Were you mm-hmm. doing were you a PA or PT, RN? What uh, were you doing? No, I was working in a medical device sales. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So you did that I for would... a little bit. That wasn't in mm-hmm. alignment, you said. Was not in alignment with me. Uh did not want to be in the OR for like 15 hours. Um I was working in spine enabling technologies and I was like, what am I doing here? This is not for me. Um, so yeah, I think one thing that Tom Bilyeu said is could, like, you always have to just be pivoting. Um, and then my mom always says this too. You're a palm tree. Palm trees don't bend; mm. They just sway. And if things hit you one way, okay, okay. You know, oh, and yeah. um, you just learn to pivot and things will be okay. But I did, when I moved here, I got in a really horrible car accident. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I got hit by an 18 wheeler on the highway. Um, and it was pretty new. I was, you know, new to Austin, just moved here, got hit by an 18 wheeler. Um, it was a very traumatic accident. And I think going back into the gratitude thing, like I'm just so grateful to be alive and to be here and be okay. Um, not saying it should take someone an accident to have gratitude in life, but I think it's going back to your mindset. I can feel bad for myself and say, oh, poor me. Like this happened to me. This now like this is an escape for me to be sad or for me to, you know, just just have a lot of um, just like like have PTSD and sadness over this. And I'm not going to lie. I did have PTSD. I was really sad for it for a really long time. But I did the work, whether it was therapy, releasing through exercise. Uh, there's so many, so many things I did to do the work to allow me to shed that mental weight because I think that I even like I I had a lot of inflammation in my body even from the exercise I'm from the from the car accident just because of the stress that it caused me and um the only way to shed that is to shed it up here in your mind Mm. mechanically speaking and and when you're working with a a uh, not patient with when you're working with a client and not to give give away the the secret sauce but like what's yeah how do you help to (laughs) you know, chop the wood of somebody that's gone through a, a similar terrible life event, like a car accident or a illness yeah. or, you know, a death in the family. And how do you like, what's, and I, I ask you this because I think about, you know, reason for everything and you know, the, yeah. the argument you hear of, Oh, like what about a childhood cancer or what about this tragedy that's going on or this, right. you know, whatever, how do you go about grappling with that on your end as, as a coach for people that are coming to you with these, this heavy mental weight? Yeah, no, that's a great, like, that's an awesome question. I, I think step one for me is to focus on, like, to ask them kind of how they want to see themselves. I think, I think so many coaches are incredible. And I think a lot of coaches focus on uh, macros firsthand and, and their programming and really stringent programming. And 
I think every coach is different. Everyone wants something different. I've done that before. Like, I think it's awesome. But I think that how my approach is, especially if you're trying to shed something emotionally, um, mentally, I I try to fo- – for, number one is have people focus on falling in love with movement and how it makes them feel. So mm. um, I ask them, what are some things you want to feel? Do you want to feel confident? Do you want to feel like you enjoy and look forward to your movements? Do you want to feel – confident in your own skin again? Do you feel like um, emotionally, is there something in your life that you've gone through, that kind of thing? So I think learning about that, about them, instead of just asking them how many pounds they want to drop or if they want to look good in a bikini or whatever it is, I, I, I truly believe that you have to shed the weight in your mind first before you can shed it physically, especially if people have gone through trauma or even just like normal people, anxiety, depression, like whatever it is, we've all gone through it. Um, so I think I really start to focus on what is it that they want to feel in their mind and how that's going to translate physically as well. And then also how can we find the exercises that they're going to actually look forward to so they can incorporate that mind body connection. So for example, let's say I'm I'm training you and you hate running, but you are open to weightlifting and walking, whatever. I'm not going to make you running unless you're like, I have a goal to love running. I have a goal to run my first half, then we'll work on it. But if you're like, I hate running, I'm not going to make you run, right? I want you to learn to actually look forward to lifting weights and feeling so strong because it's so powerful to be able to lift and to incorporate that feeling of like, Getting, letting something go in your mind um, and actually lifting and feeling that strength in the mind and the body. So I think it's like step two is finding the right exercises that work for you, that you feel strong and confident in or can grow into that and allow for that mental release. Um, and as we build that foundation, then it goes more into how can we set up a program where you set yourself up for success and learn that this is just your lifestyle. So I don't work with people that want to lose weight quickly. I don't work with people that want to go on a quick fix or diet to look good for the summer. You are with me to feel and look good for life. Um, so I want this to be a holistic life uh, pattern that you, that you always stick to and feel that this just becomes routine to you. By the time this episode airs, it'll probably be, you know, later in February, early in March. So this, this trend will be a little bit of a fad by now, by then. Mm-hmm. What are your you know, as a fitness wellness influencer, what are your ins and outs for 2024? Give me like one of each of what's something that's totally like overlooked and needs to be incorporated for everyone's journey. And what's something that needs to just be like kicked out of the vernacular of health and wellness people because you're tired of it. You don't like it, whatever. Give me your ins and outs. Oh, I like it. Okay. Um, Ins are walking a lot. Walking is not only the number one thing you could do one of the number one things you could do for fat loss, but it also allows you to clear your head and and get out in nature a little bit. I start my days off with a walk, even if it's 10 minutes getting outside, it sets your day for success. Um, Outs, I think are, and this is geared towards more females, I would say, um, but outs are too many HIIT workouts. HIIT is high intensity interval training. Um, Typically, I've seen it with countless women I've worked with. I've seen it within myself. You do too many HIIT workouts um, your body goes into a fight or flight uh, mode and your cortisol, which is your stress hormone, goes up a lot. So I think learning a balance of what's right for you and when you put your body in too much stress all the time, you are going to cause a lot of inflammation. So learning to find that right balance of exercises that work for you. Um, and in is working out to feel good and release something mentally and out is learn- is exercising just to look good. Um, that could be a part of feeling good too. Um, and then another one is, um, I think an in is like really just listening to your body. I think if you're going on this whole kickstart health journey and wanting to shed a lot of weight, it doesn't mean that you can't eat dessert. It doesn't mean that you can't take away all the things you love. A lot of times they're substitutes, but I think an in is listening to your body and, and creating that boundary for sure with your mind to maybe not be as excessive as you were before, but learning to create, I know everyone says balance, moderation. I I mean, I think that there could be moderations in part of your, parts of your life. Other parts, maybe it's not at all. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's just kind of finding like 
what feels good to you and the balance inside you. And if a cookie a night is going to make you not binge and not go crazy and eat healthy throughout the day, or maybe a dessert a few times a week, or there's healthier desserts. But I think an in is really just listening to your body in the most healthy way. Um, and I think an out is fully restricting yourself because it causes, especially women, to have eating disorders or um, to binge. Um, and I think a big out is just just not listening to your body. So learning to tune in with your mind, body, and even gut connection too. It's good stuff on the spot too. Very, very impressive. <laughs> now, you mentioned cortisol. And one of the things that yeah. I find fascinating is the idea of intermittent fasting. I've been mm -hmm. doing it for a while now. I, it yep. works for me again. I'm listening to my body. It works for me. I like it. I totally. like the focus and energy it gives me. What are your thoughts on it? Do you have any perspectives at all to share? Yeah. Um, so I think um, I, I a lot of the studies that I have seen have been focused on men. Um, and I think that I've seen it work amazing for men. And I've seen it work amazingly for females. That being said, um, I think that... I think that between studies I've seen and also guys, like, I think that if someone wants to do it, um, I think it works, right? Um, with intermittent fasting. For females, I think you have to really get to know your hormones a little bit more um, before you go into intermittent fasting. I have friends and, and clients um, that have done it and they love it and cool, it works for them. But if you are having any cortisol issues, PCOS, if you have had an imbalance of hormones, um, that means, and this is a lot of women go through this. I can't even tell you how much I've seen it. Um, but if you wake up and your body's already in a starvation fight or flight mode where you're depriving your body, it's going to have to start storing fat. Um, so I think that I would say for women, especially get your hormones checked and see where you are. Um, especially again, if you have deal with like any high cortisol or PCOS breakfast is really good to have, um, to be able to balance your blood sugars and, um, not kind of, um, and not store that excess fat. So, so much I can go into again, I say, you know, it's not a one size fits all approach, get your hormones checked and listen to your body and see what feels best to you. Makes sense. And not medical advice on my part at all. This is more totally just my, my own interest. Yeah, totally. I mean, listen, if it works for you, that's amazing. Didn't work for me. Um, it did actually the opposite effect for me and a lot of clients, really? but I've seen a lot of people that it's worked great in. So, you know, it's all a little, it's fun. It's like a game trial and error and see, see what, make it, a, make it fun, you know, like see what works you, you best. You have to pivot if it doesn't work. Like, uh, totally. like the guys at Quest. How about, uh, I'm a huge fan of my Woot band. I know there's a bunch of wearables mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. One of the things that, you know, the, the good and the bad of wearables is that if you're having a, you know, you wake up, you're tired and you, you want to have an excuse to not, you know, do the thing that day to not go and exercise your fitness tracker. My Woot band yeah. will tell me, Hey, you're in green recovery. You got to get out there. And then vice right. versa. There's some days where I feel great, but phys by all my physiological metrics on my Woot are saying, Hey, you need to take it easy today. What are your thoughts on, and how do, how do wearables impact you as a, as a trainer? Yeah. So, um, I have the Apple watch. I actually most, I use it mainly for steps. I like to see my heart rate. Um, and I also use it for time when I teach, I'm debating about getting, I was going to get the whoop or the aura ring. I just already have like a wearable on my wrist. So I was like, I'll probably get a ring instead of wearing like two things on my wrist. Some people do the whoop and the watch, but I don't know. I was like, eh, maybe I'll get the ring. I think that um, something, so it's funny. I feel like I, I check off all the boxes in health and wellness, except for sleep and sleep is something that I'm just, I have a lot of, uh, side hustles and I'm just a busy person. And I feel like that's one thing I really lack in. And every year I want to improve on it and it's happening. It's going to happen this year, but I do, um, I was thinking like, oh, that would be cool to have like an aura ring, for example, tell me that I'm in the red, like you need to rest your body today or hey, you need to get more sleep. So I think a lot of it's cool. Do I think that if someone really like was tuning into their body, I, I probably could have tell, told you without any wearables, like I'm in the red today or I'm in the green today or whatever it is. So I think again, it goes back to like, let's tune into my body and see how I'm feeling. But I think these are awesome devices to, lead, you know, like actually help you navigate and gear you in the right direction. I think also if you want to up your fitness and like really see your progression and, and recovery as a tool, um, I think they're awesome. So I'm actually on that journey of like, should I get the whoop, that kind of thing um, and, um, and go from there. But yeah, I think if people want to get more like nitty gritty on 
their recovery and everything. I think, I think it's great. Um, but I also think it's a mix of just knowing it's technology and your number one source is going to be just listening to how you feel. Join.whoop.com slash Arjan for anyone listening. Shameless plug. Tap in. It's, Ooh. uh, I've, I've been loving it. yeah. Ooh, uh, I, and I need to try it. I, I do like, I was like, I'm going to get the whoop and I think it's so cool and awesome. Um, I just, I, I don't know. Like, can I wear two, two on my wrist? I, they've got a, they've got a bicep band. You can, they have wearables that you can put it into. They have t-shirts and leggings okay. and all that stuff. You can plug it into it. Test it out. Okay. Okay. Can, can okay. Um, cool. Back to your journey, just to round out here. You mentioned all your side hustles. You know, we're recording this pretty late on a Thursday evening here. <laughs> how, how, oh my God, you're <laughs> even later than me. No, it's, it's good. But I'm, I'm curious, you know, how do you go about balancing your, your side hustles, your day job, maintaining relationships with the clients and prospective clients, keeping your network going, running your podcasts. What is yeah. your routine like as a, you know, creator, as a business owner? What's that like for you? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think at a, I love what I do. And, um, but I think, you know, at some point something has to give because I do so much. And for me right now, that's sleeping. And I'm not here to be like, everything's great. And I get eight hours of sleep. Like, I think it's cool for people to hear that, like, I'm on that journey too, as an entrepreneur with the side hustles and someone has a full-time job that like, I love what I do, but it's not easy. And I, so, you know, like sometimes you can't have the full wheel. You can't have every check. Um, so I think that it's cool to hear like for anyone listening that I too am going on that journey of, of trying to fully feel like I have that wheel balance, you know? Um, mm. so I think it's been a really cool journey and I'm, I think, I think that one thing I'm really trying to work on is saying no. Um, I'm like such a big yes girl, but it's also really important to say no. And that's something I'm trying to work on is saying no first. You can always say like yes later, but not committing to everything. Um, and really just being, there's really like being very intuitive with my time, like who I want to spend time with. Um, mm. So I think kind of like, you know, again, I, I'm not a morning person, for example, but today I, um, I went to this run club with Nike this morning at 7 a.m. And then I also taught a cycling class today. And then I worked all throughout the day. I haven't even had dinner yet. So like today was a crazy day. Um, not all days are that crazy, but like I I do love the grind. I love doing everything I do. But like as sleep is giving, I'm like, okay, I need to pivot. Just like what we talked about, what what is going to change for me to start getting more sleep, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that like one thing is instead of doing weekly podcasts, I'm starting to do bi-weekly podcasts. Um, I've started to have somebody that's helping me edit. So maybe now I can get more sleep, you know? So I think it's just learning to continuously pivot, um, with all the things that I do and realize what is a priority for me. What do I need to say no to? Um, and you know, so again, I think it's a journey every day. Uh, I really love what I do, but it's also just, you know, every day learning to change it up a bit. I hear you. Yeah, it's part, part of the journey. I'm, I uh, had David Meltzer on my show and, and and talking to him, he was, he said on a bunch of shows and he said, I'm on how we spend a third of our life asleep. I heard Todd Anderson give a similar pitch on a handful of shows that he's been on. And I, as he's saying this, he's talking about how important, David Meltzer was talking about how important it is to get a nice mattress because you're spending a third of your life asleep. And I'm looking over at the Amazon mattress that I had just ordered and, and <laughs> you know, kind of scratching my head if that was the right decision or not. But sleep is such a tricky one, especially for people in, in yours or my seat where there's so much I want to get done in a given day. Yeah. And but a, lot, a lot of days I look up and it's 949 and I haven't even had dinner yet or, or what have you or like you were saying right. too. And so it's this weird balance for I feel like the what I assume is a type A, you know, high performing individual trying to get a lot of stuff done in a given day and then also saying, hey, I need to get done. So one of the things that, because again, I'm on this journey too, one of the things that I'm really trying to implement in my day to day, I have a really good morning routine. I mm. don't have a nightly routine that I'm really mm. trying. I'm, I'm literally over the last two weeks, I've realized and, and started to try to mm -hmm. uh, finish with my uh, you know sleep routine, but I can fall asleep quickly, but I feel like I spend a lot of time in the mornings. I'm so meticulous about getting up, getting my stuff done so I can get out the door as soon as, as, soon as possible. And I'm very, very diligent about that. And the evenings are kind of lollygag around. I'll do anything I can do to just you know, keep scrolling or listening to whatever and not actually just putting my head on the pillow. So long-winded way of saying I, I'm on that journey too. And I think that 
it's uh i think my, my whoop has helped me with that but i just haven't listened to the data i've been reading for four yeah. years and i hate me to sleep more and I, I actually could agree with that like i feel like i have a morning routine but then night sometimes that gives and um same thing like if someone had a whoop you can definitely see that more but i think also just like mindset and fitness like you can also control your mind with okay phone off at this time or like no scrolling after this time so i definitely need to implement more of those things and like i said yeah. i'm not perfect either um yeah but yeah i i couldn't agree more it's, it's all a journey oh yeah and half the battle for me and i'm sure it's the same for you is by the time i get done with my day it's you know whatever time at night and i'm like oh i have so many you know uh, I'm not saying I'm oh, too cool for school, but I'm like, oh, I need to respond to these texts or these emails or yeah. catch up with my friends on social media. And then that's where I feel like the time suck comes in. Right. It, it, Me you know, too. It's all part of the, it's part of the fun. It's part of the journey and being totally. aware that, you know, it's not a burden. It's a blessing. Yeah. Um, and that's like yeah. the, uh, my brother, he also has a full-time job and, and side hustles. So it's like pretty cool that we, we actually live together. Like it's really cool that we live the same kind of lifestyle. Um, so we actually, Sundays are normally our days to like, get it ready for the week. We go to a coffee shop, we like prepare. And I feel like it sets our week up for success. So, um, those little moments throughout the week where you feel like you need, you're like, Oh my God, it's so late. Like we try to do that later in the day on yeah. Sundays to really prep for the week too. Makes sense. Hey, hey, last few questions here as we round out, tell me about your experience on ultimate tag. I think it's so gnarly yeah. and <laughs> I want to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, I was on uh, Fox's Ultimate Tag. If you're familiar with the Walt brothers, JJ, Derek, and TJ Watt, um, they um, they were the hosts of the show. Uh, really funny. I got a call from the producer. I thought it was my friend who was prank calling me. I was like, why did you prank call me? She's like, I did it. And it was the same name. I don't know why I thought it was her. Anyway, long story short, I was like, oh, this is legit. Um, I know a lot of people in the fitness industry, someone recommended me for it. I've never like auditioned for anything really. So it was really cool. Um, they hit me up. I auditioned. The audition was not a typical audition. Like, yes, you have an audition over Zoom and everything about who you are, but in your bio, but then in person, someone is, it's called ultimate tag. So how it works is you have professional parkour athletes chasing fitness professionals is the show cool. um we filmed it at warner brothers and the audition was literally parkour athletes chasing you in a uh, parkour gym and you're like whoa what um i was the youngest person on the show and everyone's like super jacked and then i'm like hey guys i'm not like this huge jack person so it was just really funny um it was really intimidating too because i was being chased by these professional parkour athletes and then everyone else competing on the show was just like these insane fitness professionals so um got on the show it was it was so cool because like it was really scary but like that's so cool to like put yourself in a situation that scares you and that takes you out of your comfort zone so it was awesome. I broke my foot on the show. There were tons of injuries um, that happened on the show. But um, but yeah, overall, it was worth it. It was super cool. Um, the watch party happened during COVID. So that was unfortunate. Uh, how we were all wearing masks and kept it small. But, um, but yeah, it was a really cool experience. Still friends with a lot of people that I was on the show with. That's wild. Too cool, too, too. Unfortunately, about the foot breaking, but uh, you know you'll be it able was to. Worth it. it was good the TV. Yeah. Good TV, you know. So it was, it was all yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually I, had to yeah. um, walk at graduation with a boot on, so that was fun. Broken foot. <laughs> okay. Part of the part of, part of the journey. Part of the journey. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, last question for you: For those who want to, you know, stay in touch, get in touch with you, Fit Food Junkies. What's the best place to find you to tap in and to you know follow along with that journey? Yeah, um, you can follow me at Fit Food Junkies. Um, post all things fitness content, mindset, all the things. Connect with me. I'd love to connect with you. Um, my website's fitfoodjunkies.com. My podcast is Fit Food Junkies. Um, and yeah, let me know what you're addicted to and to health, even if it's a negative addiction. I'd love to connect with you to help you make it a positive one. Um, and if you live in Austin, let me know. Lead the Nike Well Collective Run Club. And um, also, if you live in LA too, I'm always in LA. My whole family's there. So I would love to connect with everyone. But thank you so much for having me.